Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Susan Friedman is training us on how to increase our nonfiction book sales. Susan, I have got three questions for you, and your answers will help us get to know you at a personal number one. What fun fact would you like us to know about you? That I've been chased by an elephant and I've hugged a tiger. You've been chased by an elephant and hugged by a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hugged a tiger. It didn't hug me. Okay. Sure Let's get that right. <laughs> sure there's a story behind that. Oh, yes. Question, behind both of them. <laughs> question number two. Now, what's the best decision you have ever, ever made? To start my own business after having been laid off three times. Wow. Three times. That's not quite twice, a, not quite twice but three times. <laughs> and question number three, what is the biggest challenge you've ever had to overcome? When I, I had written a meeting and event planning for dummies and they told me at the 11th and a half hour that they weren't going to publish my book because of 9-11. I fought to get that book published and it has been um, since 2003 and I am still getting royalties. 2003, that's 18 years ago. Well done, yes. proud of you. Well, that's a book that they weren't going to publish, but they did. And so, yes, I, I feel it was a challenge, but I succeeded. Good. David. Goliath. <laughs> now, attendees, uh, a couple of notes for you. Uh, please turn on your video. If you've got some clothes on, uh, from Susan's point of view, it's not very uh, uh, nice just to be looking at a black rectangle with a name in it. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be great. Uh, please stay muted. And if you have questions during Susan's talk, uh, please type them into the chat, uh, then I'll batch them and pose them to Susan uh, during her talk. Your, all your questions will, by hook or by crook, get answered. Uh, in, a, in a few hours, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of Susan's workshop. Uh, nevertheless, I encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes will increase what you absorb by uh, as much as 30%. Susan, are you ready to wow us with your wisdom? I'm ready to share a lot of wisdom. <laughs> then you share away. Wow. <laughs> the stage is yours. Take it away, Susan. Well, welcome. Thank you, everyone. Oops. So did you know that there are over 2.2 million books published worldwide every year. And that number is growing. And 1.1 million of them are here in North America. So what does that mean? That means that we have a jumbo size problem. And what is that problem? That problem is how do you get noticed in that tsunami of titles and books and authors and everything that's going on out there in the marketplace? How do you get noticed? Well, before, I mean, there are a lot of books that unfortunately die in the book graveyard because they are just not getting the attention they need. So what we're looking at here is some burial insurance. And that is that your book doesn't die when you've got so much wonderful information in it. So what I would like to do before uh, we go into, you know, the real meat of what we're going to talk about. And that is, I want to help you overcome three false book marketing beliefs. 
And I actually just put together a special report uh, called Three False Book Marketing Beliefs. And if you would like a copy of this, and it goes into much more detail than I'm going to be able to cover today, please type your email address into the chat and Roger will save all that for me. And I will personally send you a copy of this. So in the meantime, let's look at those three false book marketing beliefs and obviously how to cure them. So the first one is, um, believe it or not, um, many of you know, many of you have worked with me. So I recognize names, you're Aviva Publishing authors and thank you, thank you for being Aviva Publishing authors and thank you also for uh, supporting me today. I really appreciate it. And the numbers are looking great, Roger. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, Roger, taking over the admit function, and then I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. So the, the first question I ask uh, people when they come to want to publish with Aviva Publishing, and that is, who is your book for? And I just had a brief conversation with uh, Serena before we started this chat. I want you to know who your book is for. Now, if I tell you that I would be a very rich woman if I got $100 for every person who told me that their book, whoops, I can't even fast forward that way, um, that their book is for everyone. Well, that's a false belief because yes, it might be for everyone. I never want to challenge anyone's belief when they say to be my book is for everyone. It's a universal message. And I say, yes, it may well be. The problem is how are you actually going to market that book? Because you cannot market to everyone. I mean, not even the greats of the greats, the Procter and Gambles of this world, you know, the Nikes of this world, they do not try and market to everyone. So how do you think that you're going to be able to do that? So what is the remedy for that? So the remedy, I call it a truth serum, and that is to pinpoint your exact audience. Who really needs the information that you have to offer? You see, your book may be for everyone, but as we know, we can't, we can't market it to everyone. We can't sell it to everyone. And you can throw a lot of money, and people do, at all different fancy marketing techniques in the hope that you're going to find the exact target audience. Well, ah doesn't work like that. You want to go the other way around and pinpoint that audience first and foremost. Um, many of you know that um, I worked in the trade show industry for many years. So my target audience was actually trade show exhibitors. And I knew that going in. And my book, Exhibiting at Trade Shows, sold 500,000 copies. Now, how come it sold 500,000 copies? It sold 500,000 copies because I knew exactly who my material was for. And when you know who your material is for, it's going to make it so much easier for you to sell your book. So think about that. Write down who you think your exact target audience is. That's going to be key as you move forward. The next false belief is that publishing your book is going to bring you fame and fortune. Well, I'm not going to say it's not, but as my uh, one of my mentors said, it takes 15 years to become an overnight success. So just publishing one book 
doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to all of a sudden shoot you to the stars and make yourself known. Uh, it could, you might be a one minute wonder. There are people out there who make it that way, but I would not put money on it. I would not put money on it. You know, make sure that in fact, you have a positioning strategy. What is your positioning strategy with your book? I mean, I never sold my book on Amazon. At the time, it wasn't, it didn't exist, but still I didn't go to bookstores with my book. And in fact, I lie, I did. They, it was sold through Barnes and Noble, um, but I didn't want to sell it in onesies and twosies. So I looked at who wants my book, who I, it was written for exhibitors at trade shows. Well, how was I going to find those exhibitors? Who could I work with to help buy books? Because I was interested in selling books in, in bulk. I wasn't interested in selling books in onesies and twosies. Yeah, that wasn't for me. I wanted to say, hey, yeah, let's sell, let's sell a few more of them <laughs> than that. So we looked, I looked at who else had my target audience in mind and would be interested potentially in my book. So I thought about, well, who supplies hardware or products, in fact, to exhibitors at trade shows. And if you know anything about trade shows, it's the people who build the exhibits. And there are two kinds of exhibits. There's the custom exhibit. Those are the big fancy ones that cost uh, half a million, a million dollars or more. And then there are the portable exhibits. These are what they call 10 by 10s. They fill the space. They've just got a screen. And, um, you, you know, it's very simple. So I approached the custom exhibits, uh, exhibit uh, manufacturers, and I found one who was interested in the book and they ended, ended up ordering 2000 copies. So that, that to me sounded, wow, I like that. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to go to their competitors. That wouldn't be fair. So let me go to the, the display, um, the portable display people. And so I found a company that was interested in the book. And what did they do? They bought 250,000 copies, which they had translated into five languages. And then after two years, they ordered another 250 copies. So over 500,000 copies of this book were sold. Basically, between two companies. Now, I challenge you to, in fact, think about who really could you be working with to sell your book. And that is starting position, to position yourself. So you have to know your target audience and then look at who would really, really be interested in your book. Moving on to the third belief, and that is that this fancy name, Amazon, you know, what is Amazon? They are not going to sell your book for you. So many people say to me, oh, I'm going to post my book on Amazon and they're going to sell it for me. Well, sorry, that won't happen. Amazon isn't about selling your book. Amazon is merely a shop window and you have to bring people to that shop window so you're not cutting you know any corners by working with amazon should you have it on amazon absolutely and there's a whole game and some of you might know about getting it a bestseller on amazon yes that's great doesn't mean it's going to sell any more books for you. But I do suggest, yes, I recommend people are on Amazon. Um, 
no reason why it shouldn't be. And there are several other um, platforms where you can put books, especially um, eBooks, you know, and don't rely just on Kindle. I mean, they've got about 70% of the marketplace, but there's another 30% worldwide that you could potentially um, go after. So let's look at what is the truth serum is instead of just relying on Amazon is to have a marketing strategy, you know, obviously a website, um, an SEO content, email marketing links. Now, be careful of social media. We had an incident yesterday, which I have been talking about for many years, and that is Facebook went down. Facebook went down and was it going to, we didn't know how long it was going to go down for. We didn't know what was happening there. And I think there were a lot of unhappy people around the world that couldn't access anything because they linked through Facebook and whatever reliance they had on Facebook or other social media. If you're relying on that for your marketing, you're building a house on rented land. Your best strategy is to get people to come to your website, to have some kind of lead magnet. No, it could be, um, I, I worked with uh, an author this week and we talked about, she put together a, an MP3 a, a, a meditation that she's giving away. Um, some people give away a chapter of their book. That isn't necessarily overly exciting. People love lists, they love checklists, they love tips. Those are easy ones to put together. Or something like I did with the three um, false beliefs for marketing, you know, to overcome to market your book. So think about what would be relevant for you to have as a some kind of attraction, which is called a lead magnet, um, to get people to sign up on your website and you can then start marketing to them. Now, a dear friend of mine has a company called Email With Heart, uh, Leanne Webster, and she says, your mailing list is sacred. So be careful, don't overuse your list um, because otherwise the people are going to unsubscribe and you want to keep your list, you want to keep them happy. And so respect your inboxes, as Leanne would say. So hopefully, you know, in just that short time, I've encouraged you to what I call dump those false beliefs because they're not serving you. They're not serving you at all. So let's have a look at a whole new mindset and the results that you can consider. So let's look at three mindset essentials as you're going in and you know selling your book, selling, your book really is about your value and your expertise, your message that you want to bring to the marketplace. You know, what is that? What is the value? What is the message that makes your book so valuable? I invite you to write that down, is to think about that and to very seriously know and understand what value your book serves. Because when you know that and you know the people you're serving, it's going to help you enormously as you start looking for ways in which you can sell your book in bulk rather than rely on onesies and twosies uh, uh, selling them. So let's have a look at the first mindset. And the first mindset is to adopt an expert mindset. Well, that's easily said, but more, more easily said than done. Why? 
because we don't necessarily believe that we are an expert. We often cringe at that. You know, it, yes, we don't necessarily want to say we are an expert. I know I've had this discussion. People say, well, I have expertise and I can't call myself an expert, but you could call me an expert and that would be okay. Okay, so it's your expertise, whether it's you call it an ex, you're an expert or it's your expertise. The fact is, you have knowledge and skills that other people need and will value. Question is, who are those people? We often believe that we are what a fraud. Oh, that comes up over and over again when we don't believe in ourselves. And that's something that maybe you've heard about, something called the imposter syndrome. I remember very early in my career that I, in fact, felt that same way. I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, here I am. I'm doing a training program and people are hiring me. Companies are hiring me and they are saying that I'm an expert and I'm not sure that I really feel like an expert, you know, and maybe, you know, they're going to, I, I just feel as if I'm a bit of a fraud. Well, know that you are in good company because famous people out there have said exactly the same thing. Meryl Streep, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Lady Gaga. I mean, these people have all said, they felt like a fraud. And I absolutely love this saying from Tom Hanks, who said, no matter what we've done, there comes a point when you think, how did I get there? When we're going to discover, when they're going to discover that I am in fact a fraud and take everything away from me, you know, there's that fear, that fear. So even the greats of the greats who we look up to, have felt this way. And anybody, uh, I've spoken to hundreds of people about this and they say the same thing, that that comes up. If you've had that happen to you, if you felt that way, write yes in the chat. Would you do that for me? And Roger, tell me, do we have any yeses? They're on their way, yes. We They're have. on their way, well yes, good. Yes, <laughs> coming in thick and fast. And while they come in, before the, the question disappears, let me ask it of you. It comes from, comes, oh dear, don't tell me I've lost it. It was, uh, I have three books in mind. I'm pretty sure it was from Natalie. I've, yes, it was. I have three books in mind. What's the, what do I, what do, I do to decide which one to write first? Oh, so they haven't been written yet. So the been. one, well, first of all, the one that your passion uh, lies with, you know, um, it's going to be your passion that really sells the book. I mean, just think about uh, whenever I say that, I think of that scene in a, a movie when Harry met Sally. And if you've seen that movie and if you haven't, I highly recommend that you, you see it, watch it on Netflix or wherever you can find it. Um, there's a scene there where Sally and Harry are having dinner in a restaurant and she has this orgasmic reaction to a dessert and everybody in the restaurant like looks at her and says, I want what she's having. And so it's, it, we, we sell our book and our message and our value with our passion. We've really got to feel passionate about what it is that we're selling. So my advice to you, and I'd be happy to talk to you, Natalie, about that. And, and literally, you know, where is your passion and who is it that you want to serve with that? Because that's going to be very important when it comes to actually selling um, the book or offering that. Nowadays, I'm hearing it's not selling, it's serving. How can you serve your target audience the best? What are you passionate, passionate about? Susan, so I, I have your permission to publish your email? 
Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to give it out uh, at the end, Roger, too. So um, the, everybody will have an opportunity because I've got a special gift for everybody. Okay. So, so I'm using Susan at, at pubs.com. That's good. Susan at avivapubs.com. Aviva. Absolutely. Thank your pardon. Yes. Yes. Done. So, are we good to move right on, Roger? We are good to move right along. Excellent. Thank you. I, I was so, tempted to ask you to impersonate Sally in the restaurant, but no, no, probably not, not a good around. idea. Maybe next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my favorite marketing guru, Seth Godin, says, what separates winners from losers isn't talent, it's attitude. It's your mindset, your attitude towards what you're offering the service that you're offering, the book, the value, the message that you're offering. What are your thoughts around that? So let's look at the second um, mindset rule, and that is wanting to change. You know, are we willing to change? Or we, do we even know what we want to change? We tend to do the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. I think you've heard that, that sort of, um, what is it? Uh, I can't even think of it. My mind's just gone blank. Any event, changing, being willing to change, being willing to try something new. Because the third uh, way is to look for ways to improve. What, what are some of ways to improve what you're doing? You know, if you're already marketing your book, what's working, what isn't working? And what if, what if it isn't working, what can you do to say, let me get curious about this. In fact, I just wrote an article on curiosity about how you can use curiosity to sell your book. And that is to ask different questions. Look at it like a scientist. What can I look to improve? What can I do differently? What if, you know, I actually didn't have a marketing budget for my um, exhibiting at trade shows book, which was my first book. I, I didn't have that. And I, I was like, well, that's not really what I recommend. However, I said, what if, you know, who would need what I have? Who, who would be interested in what I have? Oh, there tends to be this um, automatic way of, well, this author did it this way and this author did it that way. Yes, but is it the right way for you? Are you selling the exact same thing that this particular author did or sold? You know, I mean, there are some very famous names out there. And the fact is everybody is doing it differently and some things work better than others. But what's right for you, your book, and the people who you are targeting with your message and the value that you have to offer? Because at the end of the day, you want customers to chase you. You don't want to have to go chasing them. And the more you can be seen as an expert in your field, as the go-to person in your field, that is what's going to help you sell your books. Now, I'm going to look at, you know, how can you make money doing this? Well, there before are- Before you do that, I, Susan, yep. before you go there, can I ask- Oh, yes, 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 yes. I should stop and ask you for questions. Thank you for the reminder, Roger. <laughs> Anne-Marie wants to know, are there podcasts you recommend being a guest on? Uh, Anne-Marie is the author of Release Your Inner Badass. I know, and I know her because she's publishing her book through uh, Aviva Publishing. So thank you. And yes, look at who is your target audience, Emery, because then you will 
find which podcast they are listening to. Do a search in that genre. In fact, I did this um, with one of my clients this week that we looked at. She, her book is about um, self-transformation. So we're looking at podcasts in the self-development, self-transformation um, arena. And those are the ones that look at, you know, who, which ones are successful, which ones have um, guests. Now, many of you know, I've got a podcast, Book Marketing Mentors. We've been, it's an award-winning podcast. We come out every Wednesday. And if you want to uh, get, a, get that, um, again, put your name on the list and I'd be more than happy, you know, put your email in the chat. I'd be more than happy to um, add you to Book Marketing Mentors. Any event, in that podcast, those uh, of you who listen to it know that I interview people who will help authors with their marketing expertise to give them different information on different aspects of being able to market themselves as an author, as well as their book. A related question from Dean. I haven't finished, Roger. Let me finish. Thank your pardon. <laughs> I took a breath. <laughs> so what I just was um, approached by a PR company to have a guest on the podcast. They have never listened to my podcast. I know by the formula of the letter that they sent me. They're offering a guest who has a book and they're thinking that I'm going to help promote their book. And that is not the case. And don't go onto a podcast expecting to promote the book as it say, per se. You know, people are not going to have you just because you wrote a book. They're going to have you based on the message in the book and the value that you can bring to their listeners. So that's the way I would like you to think about that. And especially with the genre and, um, and we can definitely talk about that too. So yes, R uh, Roger, next question. What, what, what have we got going on? We've got a lot of activity I can hear, which is wonderful. D wants to know if there are any podcasts that you would recommend for finance and money for business owners. He is the author of Collect the Cash. I would do a search. I don't know any offhand. If there's somebody in the group who knows some um, a good podcast in that genre, absolutely feel free to add that. So and and maybe you know of some really good podcasts that have guests, uh, put that in the, um, in the chat so that you can help each other because that too is so uh, important. I mean, I'm not the source of all knowledge, far from it. Um, you know, it, it's all of you with all of your knowledge and skills and the things that you know. I mean, please, please be willing to share that um, with each other. So yes, Thank you, Susan. No are, are we good? We no further good? questions. We're good. Sorry? We're good. You can carry on. I can carry on. Thank you, sir. Good. My so, well, let's, uh, let's look at four pillars of expert authority. So there are four pillars of expert authority, and these four are going to help you make money with the book, either directly or indirectly. So the first one speaking. You will make more money speaking than you ever will selling books. Now, unless, of course, you sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of them, the fact is that you can get paid far more for a speaking gig. And what you can also do, which is a great um, strategy, is that you ask the meeting planner if everybody in the audience, if they, if they, she would like, or he would like everyone in the audience to have a copy of the book. And that could be another, um, it, you know, way in which you can get the book out. I hate the idea of back of the room sales 
because you schlep boxes of books and you don't know whether you're going to sell them or you're not going to sell them. I know people who've schlepped them and then they don't sell any. So, I mean, that that's, you know, paper is very heavy. Um, if they don't necessarily want to, or they don't have the budget, which is more um, to the point is that they don't necessarily have the budget. See if they have somebody who might sponsor the books and pay for them. And there may be ways in which, you know, you can make some arrangements with them, but that's a way. And um, I would also look at workshops. I'd look at conferences in your area of expertise. So those, the, the woman who talked about finance, go and look at what events are coming up in that, um, in that finance arena, you know, depending on which part, I mean, finance is a huge area, you know, which part of it are you interested in? Are you interested in the financial planning? Are you interested in some other aspect? You know, who, who are the big boys in that arena? I've, I've got a colleague who uh, works with John Hancock. And so John Hancock sponsors a lot of um, her speaking and then any materials that she wants to put out there. So look at who out there would be of value to you, you could partner with. Also, I mean, trade shows are coming back and guess what? people love to do, exhibitors love to do at trade shows, is to give something away. So instead of the tchotchkes, the pens that break and the, anything else, the other stupid stuff that they, they um, give away sometimes, which by the way, I used to go to these shows, bring them all back. And my, when I uh, gave them to my son, he would take them to school to sell them. So that's what happens sometimes to things that get given out at trade shows. But how about a company giving away a copy of your book? I mean, wouldn't that be nice? And they're ordering a thousand, two thousand copies of your book. And you would be willing obviously for a small fee or a large fee to come to the booth and sign the books. Or, or and if you speak at that event, that you encourage people to go to a certain booth to pick up a copy of your book. So you can work lots of different angles with this. It's just thinking differently about your book and not relying on bookstores and Amazon and you know other places where, as I said, you're selling just onesies and twosies. Think, how can I sell my book in bulk? That's what I want you to start thinking about. Start writing down some ideas. You know, don't, you know, you might have them now. Writing, guess what? You wrote your book. Your book is full of messages and magic. You have got so much material that is encased in that book. Let's put it out in different ways. Let's put it out in articles, checklists, tips. Um, when I was doing the trade show uh, um, materials, first of all, I wrote articles every single week and they were in every single exhibiting publication. That's where pe my people were going. So what happened was people would say to me, I see you everywhere. Well, was I everywhere? No, but I was where they went. So when you got your audience, look at what do they read? Where do they go? What forums are they on? You know, you need to know and understand where these people hang out so that you can start, you know, offering this kind of information. Maybe there are blogs that you should be uh, a guest um, presenter on, um, you know, I put out, I took my Exhibiting at Trade Shows book and I turned it into checklists. And I also turned it into tip sheets. And I sold 
those tip sheets. Now my book sold for, I believe it was 1995. And I just had to think about it. How much did we sell the book for? Yes, it was 1995. I sold the tip sheets, which was only a different format of the same information in the book. I sold that for $50 and I sold it as a download. I didn't even print it out. But one point early on, I printed it out. I put it in a three ring binder. And then I'm like, you know what? People can uh, download a PDF. And then they can, you know, they've got it for themselves. And I tell you what, people will pay money for information they can't get other places. So think about your information. What can you do with your book and the messages and the magic that's contained in it? Exposure. Well, you know, we've got <laughs> radio, television, internet. Uh, we've got so much out there. You talked about podcasts. Um, podcasts are a great way to get known out there too. You know, just be consistent, constant. There's no one thing that, you know, well, you're Susan, well, which is the best one? The best one is the one that you use, you go after. Um, I'm talking to somebody at the moment about being on TikTok. I was like, oh my goodness, this was, I said, thought this was for teeny boppers. Well, apparently not. There's a very serious side of, of uh, TikTok where experts are going and sharing their information. Now, in sound bites, in small mini chunks between what is it, 15 seconds and three minutes is the longest. And I was watching a few of these videos. And, and the fact is, why can't you be an expert in your field and be out there? I know Clubhouse is doing a lot of um, work to in specific uh, rooms, you can do discussion groups and everything. So, but is this where your, your people hang out? Because if it isn't, don't go there. You know, people say to me, should I be on Facebook? Should I be on LinkedIn? Should I be on Instagram? I don't know, where are your people? You gotta find that out, you know, because where they are is where you need to be. Yeah. Don't go on Facebook if they're on LinkedIn and don't go on LinkedIn if they're on Facebook or on Instagram. So you just need to know and you do have to do, I'm afraid you're going to have to do a little bit of research. You know, it's just par for the course. It's just par for the course. There's no silver bullet that I can say, yes, you need to do it exactly like this. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But I'm giving you this broad brush approach for things for you to be thinking about with your book, because that's that's essential. And then finally, products. That's your fourth pillar of being able to make money. And here, here are nine of the top informational products that you can sell. I mean, online courses. I mean, look at all the online courses that were created now during the pandemic. You know, ebooks, I mean, that's a product. Membership programs, digital temp, people love templates. People love templates. And they, if they can't get in anywhere for free on the internet, they will pay for it. You know, audio, video products, you know, software, apps, you know, tip sheets, checklists, subscription service, certification programs. Could you certify people um, for to to sell to do your course, a trainer trainer type licensing? I mean, all of that is, I mean, far more effective financially than ever it is trying to sell books in onesies and twosies. So I, I hope I'm getting that message um, through without sounding too much like a stuck record. So, um, so I've given you a menu of, of options. So let's have a look at what we've covered in the time together. I mean, I've, I've covered a lot. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a high content presenter. Uh, many of you who know me know that. Um, so, but you know, we've looked at three false marketing beliefs and remember if you want that report, that special report, put your email in the chat and I will send it to you. Uh, we've looked at three ways to adopt um, an expert mindset. 
You know, how can you think of yourself as an expert and not fall into the trap of, of stopping yourself because, you know, of that imposter syndrome, thinking that you're a fraud. And then finally, now these four pillars of expert authority, key, all of them are key. So before we look at answering some more questions, I have a special gift for you. And the special gift is a 20 minute book selling brainstorm call. I will talk to you over the phone. You and I will get together over the phone. And this is literally, we'll look at your situation, look at who your book is for, if you haven't got a specific target market or niche market. And then we will look at well, what are the options that you might look at um, and we'll do all of that in that 20 minute call. And this isn't a selling call. Now, if you decide that you would like to work with me after that, fine, we can definitely talk about that. But the 20 minutes is looking at a book selling brainstorm. That's what it's about. We're going to brainstorm your book and how you could be selling it in bulk or what you could be doing to get yourself out there to be seen as an expert in your niche market, in your target market, in your focused market, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it niche by book, riches and niches, how to make it big in a small market. Um, that one's still selling and that came out, so I think it was 2013. You know, my books sell, because, why? I'll tell you why. They sell because they're full of what's known as evergreen material. And evergreen information material is information that people can use for a long time. And if you can write from that standpoint, that has longevity. If you're in an industry that's fast moving, if you're in high tech, you know, you're constantly having to stay abreast of what's going on. If you can write some evergreen material, put evergreen material out there, that's going to really, really serve you. So send me an email if you would like to take advantage of this 20 minute book selling uh, brainstorm call and we'll set up time. I actually am out of town for the next couple of weeks, but end of October um, and then I'm around for all of November. I would be thrilled and it would be my honor to uh, do this for you. So please, I hope you'll take advantage of that. Send me an email at susan at avivapubs.com. Okay, and now, Open to questions, Roger. I know we had a lot already, but is there are there more? What have we got going on in the chat there? We have a question from Jason. Uh, does your company market edit the book as well as publish the book? Do you work on royalties or pay paid or are you paid for hire? So Aviva Publishing is a very different model. It's known as a hybrid publisher and you are actually self-published under the Aviva Publishing banner. So Aviva Publishing out of New York. And we work with editors and designers. We recommend them, let's put it that way. We recommend people who we, whose work we really know well and who we know will do a good job for you. And then you pay those people directly. So you pay us a fee to be part of Aviva Publishing if you're a right fit for us. And then you also, as part of working together with me, you get a 30 minute book marketing strategy session. You keep every piece of profit from your book. Aviva Publishing doesn't own anything other than the ISBN number, which is assigned to Aviva Publishing. So it's a very different hybrid model from those out there. And I'd be more than happy to talk to you directly um, about that. We can set up, you know, set up a call and I will talk to you about how we, how we work. 
but it is it is different and we don't take royalties and the book's yours and we don't sell it back to you you know we we have you work directly with a printer and yeah so as i said i can talk to you more about that directly patricia would like to know what the process is to go about choosing a price for your book that's a very good question. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I would look, I would highly recommend uh, uh, you looking at other books in your genre. So, you know, what is a competitive title? Just go on to Amazon and have a look at what they're selling their book for. And I would definitely recommend to keep it within that same range. Um, there's a pretty much a rule of thumb, um, but just a guideline rule of thumb that a, a soft cover book is, I mean, we're talking nonfiction, um, 1995 for a soft cover, and then um, hard cover is either 24.95 or 29.95. Those are sort of, you know, the ballparks. Um, but again, depends how much you want to make on the book and how you're selling it. And when you self-publish or, or I, I say through Aviva, if you publish through us, for instance, you are self-published under the Aviva banner. Um, then you keep the profit of the book. And let's say you do the kind of strategy that I was I did with um, exhibiting at trade shows, then you could work out with a company that, let's say a meeting planner wanted to buy books. Well, if normally it's 1995, but you know, you could sell it for 10 bucks. You could sell it for five bucks, depending on how much per unit cost it costs you to have them printed. And if you know anything about printing, the, the more you print, the cheaper the per unit cost of the book, price of the book. However, you need to have the numbers to sell those books before you go and print them. So don't print them and then try and sell them. Already know that you have a certain number of sales beforehand uh, to be able to do that. So hope that answers that. Happy to talk to you again one-on-one -on -one about that as well. Nancy, will we know on? if she should start marketing her book before it's published? Absolutely. The sooner you can start, as soon as you have that book cover, start marketing the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, that's depending on how you want to do that, but have a strategy as to how you would do that. Uh, if you've got a lot of followers on Facebook, um, encourage them to come onto your website and offer them something as an incentive so that you can get them on your list so that you can market to them directly. Okay, so if you, you can pre-sell the book, uh, you can pre-sell it through Amazon, you can pre-sell it through your website, which personally I much prefer if you can do that. Um, so yes, and then you're, you're keeping the profits rather than Amazon, so yes. Maria, absolutely. You can never, you, you can never start too soon marketing your book. I know a guy who is once he had the cover, it was two years before the book came out. He was marketing the heck out of it for two years. So yes, <laughs> great question though. Yes, Marianne would like to know uh, if there are any strategies that you recommend for raising capital for books that will be given away for a special cause. Okay, great question. Um, I would look at, again, companies, and you and I can talk about this um, too. I think you have a strategy session with me. We can talk about that. Um, there may be companies out there who are interested in that cause and would be willing to help with that. Uh, there's also crowdfunding is another option that I've, I've heard people have had lots of success with. So again, I would, I would definitely um, check, uh, check those out. Great question, yes. Patricia asks, uh, while looking for a bulk way to sell your book, should you simultaneously sell on Amazon or through other avenues or hold off on selling until you found a bulk way to sell? No, just keep selling it. 
you know, but it doesn't mean you should stop. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, it, it, it's like investing. You want a diverse uh, portfolio. So the more you can, you know, put it out there in different Amazon, uh, different avenues, Amazon just being one of them, don't rely on Amazon. It's just that people have been trained. You know, Amazon has trained us to, you know, go to Amazon for books. Um, so there's people sort of have this expectation it's on Amazon. Is it on Amazon? Can I get it on Amazon? Yes, you can, but I'd much prefer you got it from my, me on my website. But yes, so don't, you know, put it out in as many different places as you can, because you just never know. And in the same time, yes, look at how you can do bulk sales, because, yeah, I mean, my bulk sales didn't come you know, straight away once the book was published. You know, it was in bookstores, but I just was like, oh, I don't want to rely on the bookstore selling this for me. But by the way, if you want it in bookstores as well, ask them to order the book if they don't have it in stock. And then when they get it in, trick of the trade, you go, you look at the book on the bookshelf and you put it so that the cover you pull it out from the, where the spine is showing and you put the book so it's facing forward on the shelf. So the people see the book because, you know, when you're looking at all the different spines, uh, so many different uh, books out there. So just a silly little technique that uh, we use, but it was very, very effective. <laughs> Which format? What else? We've got some great questions, Roger. This is amazing. Roger, do you realize we have over 99 people on this call? No, we have 40. Oh, I've got 99. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at chat. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm going, okay, this is so amazing. <laughs> I've, I've got about six questions backed up here, Susan. Uh, which, which format book is recommended, ebook or physical copy? both what about paying to market a book on a list service that barry came across if if, if they've got a, a good track record and you want to put the money there again just don't put all your eggs in one ba basket barry question from megan what are the best trade shows to exhibit to meet book distri distributors for bulk sales so um, look at, if you're looking at book fairs, look at book fairs. There's the New York book fair, which is a big one. There's ones overseas. There's the Frankfurt book fair, which is huge. Um, but if you want to do that, you need to go to them. And you could also, by the way, look at foreign rights when you go to these. So there's a whole different avenue. We haven't even touched on that, but that's another way to sell books is through foreign rights. But you've got to be very careful and know what you're doing there. Um, and I'm not an expert in that area at all, uh, but I, I, I've got people I could definitely recommend there. Would a bookstore still take your book if it was self-published on Amazon? If it was self-published on Amazon. If, you, if Amazon is the publisher, um, I'm not sure. I don't know the answer to that question, I'm afraid. And that asks, my book is a memoir on my cancer journey. What kind of trade shows or bulk sales can I do? I would definitely look at who would be interested in that, what kind of cancer, there's so many different kinds of cancer, and I would look down that avenue, I would look to uh, pharma companies uh, who might be interested, especially, you know, again, I don't know enough about it, and I would be more than happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, Adrian would like to know your comments on audiobooks and Audible or other audiobook outlets. Yes. The answer is yes. Do an audiobook. That is the trend. And don't think that just because somebody um, has an audiobook that um, they won't buy the ebook and the, the, the uh, physical copy as well. People often buy all three versions. 
So um, I know that I do. If I want to see what somebody is saying, I buy both. So um, yeah, and and it's a trend. People people are listening to books. So definitely think about that. Um, I know uh, Jane Malucci's on the call. I know she does audio books and I've got some other uh, contacts as well. So uh, yeah, Jane, if you wanna put your email in there as well, maybe people will be interested in, in speaking to you if you're interested in speaking to them. <laughs> Susan, uh, you have been a wealth of information and a oh very, God. very yeah. generous donor of that information. Okay. Ooh, why. why am I? I don't know why I'm fuzzy. I don't. Uh, I don't know why he's there. It's an interesting. I don't know either. Who? Maybe yeah. it's a webcam. It hasn't quite adjusted quickly. It hasn't quite adjusted yet. Yeah. yeah. And if I haven't answered your questions or you want to speak to me, um, then definitely um, uh, give me. You know, Susan at AvivaPubs.com. Um, yeah, I would love to connect with you. So yeah, I was looking at this, this number 99 plus. So I was getting all excited, Roger, but for the wrong reason. <laughs> well, that's okay. I've just uh, published your email address in the chat. Thank you. Oh, I don't know why this is so fuzzy. This is like, okay, come on already. This is uh, a good camera. <laughs> Susan, thank you so much on behalf of EIN's 80,012 or thereabouts members. Uh, 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 you've just been, as you always are, uh, very knowledgeable, no, and super no. generous, <laughs> willing and super generous to share your knowledge with us. Well, I appreciate people being here too, Roger. So um, thank you to everybody who turned up. I, I appreciate it. Whether you knew me or not, I still appreciate it. <laughs>